Jumu Mubarak to everybody out there and alhamdulillah for all their support, all their comments, mashaAllah lots of support, lots of sharing, lots of comments on videos and uh, alhamdulillah don't forget the water wells, the orphanage programs, the food programs, all of these are run by our community and, uh, and our people in India, in Pakistan, in Kenya, Canada, Los Angeles, Chicago, so alhamdulillah lots of lots of programs and and thousands of pounds of food and, and, and uh, thousand water wells and, and thousands of people have been reached and blessed and dressed. So alhamdulillah, mashaAllah Allah give us more and more himmah and our people to have more and more himmah. Those whom are actually doing the, the work out on the road and those whom are supporting and paying for those things to happen. So alhamdulillah, this small group of people can make a big, big difference in this world inshaAllah. At least for ourselves, our family and our community that all these actions will be written for our families as a safety through these days of difficulty and hardship. A day in which people won't find anything to eat. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Mulana Shaykh relates to us that the reality of the whale that swallowed Jonah is the reality of our Master Shah Naqshiban's soul. What is the celestial reality of that whale? A black hole, a galaxy? Alhamdulillah. <coughs> The oceans and the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that uh, can't even be understood, Fardun Alam Shah Hikul. The before Allah created any awliya, the soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban was created 7,000 years before the existence of any awliya Allah. That what Allah put in the re reality we said that the tariqahs, the soul of all tariqahs is Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah. That what he's taking from the secrets of the Holy Companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as Salaam and Imam Ali Salaam and from the reality of what he created of the reality of these Muhammadan lights and the soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, its immensity and its immense blessings. That in an ocean in which we described as Sayyidina Abu Yazid al Bistami was in his marifa in the ocean. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ocean of souls reaching towards its reality that reach to a point of the zikr of who in which the overwhelming reality of who was being emanated and the sound of who was emanating. And as he dove deeper into that reality he came upon a station in which one of the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshband was the nazar over the pearls and the realities of insan. That anyone whom Allah are going to grant them their reality, <coughs> their soul, its image like a pearl in Divinely Presence. The same pearl that Sayyidina Muhammad when Allah described to Prophet I have created all this creation for you and showed them as beatific pearls. And Prophet was so happy to receive them. Then Allah said, but let me also show you their state in which their actions have dirtied their reality. And then the image was not as beautific as was before as the sins of mankind had piled upon these realities. 
That same pearl and that same reality is what people are trying to achieve. Is that Allah to grant them from that pearl into their reality so that they can be containers and vessels for their reality on this earth. One of the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshband is the nazar and the zikr of who upon that reality. So that has an immense stress and immense blessings that Allah granted for us to be from Naqshbandiyatul Aliya. And in this way of marifah and the ways of, of these realities that Mawlana Shah Naqshband's nazar to be upon us and to grant us from these realities, to grant us from this ocean of lights and ocean of immense blessings in which to be dressed by the secret of that pearl. And that, <coughs> that pearl Allah mentions in Surat Ar-Rahman and the souls of only Allah their secrets are in Surat Ar-Rahman. And these are from the, the realities of Naqshbandiyatul Aliya that Allah's ancient, ancient kitab is giving the secrets of these souls in Holy Qur'an. So has an immense, immense blessings that when Sayyidina Yunus before he had an incomplete light and we describe that in a whole discussion and a whole talk of Islam that there was a light of guidance but not the perfection of the heart of the sun. Means there was a nur but not a nar within their reality that it was only reflecting the light but not having a source of internal fire within his reality and was cast into an ocean. And these are Allah's of Ajaz oceans of rahmah and mercy. And the whale signifies the souls because not a fish is fish is a soul, but a whale is describing that their souls are. Fulukul mashhoom, they're like loaded ships. They're so immense that underwater they come and they can devour entire realities and they bring that soul inside their reality to dress in to bless that individual. And that's true in all the zikrs and in all the associations. That if we look at this earth like an ocean, what's the difference? This earth right now is an ocean, your atmosphere is an ocean. From the reality of these awliya the same thing is happening. As soon as you listen to the zikrs, as soon as you listen to these associations, the soul of the shaykh is all encompassing, immediately begins to encompass all the souls of those whom are with them. This is from the world of light. So people think, oh there's few people sitting and that's all that's happening but that's nothing that's happening. In the ocean of reality you're talking about shaykhs whom have guidance and they operate through their soul. So imagine in, in one instance they can see their soul holding up the earth in one hand and the moon in another. How high and how large is the soul? that the earth is in their hand. So imagine now they open their soul and the earth is only in their hand. The entirety of the earth, all its inhabitants if they're in this state of their soul, in their state of their light, their hand can contain all the souls just on this earth and all who are living and all who passed in, in their graves. The immensity of their light and the reality of light is just something not comprehensible. And as soon as the majlises begin and the people whom watch and that's what this whole talk about love was because we can't understand what's actually really happening. Because when you be with whom you love is not physical. Allah doesn't care for only physical world, He says, this is like the weight of a wing of a mosquito. Allah's concern is for that which is eternal. Allah's concern is for the holy soul, that which is an e eternal creation. And if Allah's concern is that then the concern for Prophet must be similar. 
you'll be with whom you love is not a physical state. Physical would be great if everybody could find their guide and physically accompany them but there's no space that can happen. And as a result of internet it's even teaching us you don't need that. But your accompanying is through your soul. When you love them your soul is bonding with them and wherever they are and whatever their ibadah and whatever their dress is being dressed upon them, all those whom love them their soul is a ship. Fulqul mashkoon. The Allah said, we created these loaded ships, why? That they traverse and anyone who loves them they deposit that soul upon this, the soul of that shaykh and so easy. So people say, oh how is it possible? Say, look at light. If we have a whole bunch of lights and somebody turns on a much stronger light, what happens with light? It diffuses and grafts into the greater light. So block out the room, put three candles and each are like little three lights going and then turn one spotlight on, you don't see the candles anymore, what happened? The spotlight grabbed the other lights, so it's the superior source of illumination. The candles are not blown out. They're still there, so the candles are burning but you don't see that light, why? Because it's engulfed in the greater light. The greater luminescence, the light that has a greater strength overwhelms and overtakes all the lesser lights and grafts it within its reality and then keeps it within its reality. And that's what one of the meanings of you'll be with whom you love, love then the right people. Give your soul to the right people, your heart and your ish to the right people. Means to La ilaha illallah wa Muhammadun Rasulullah We described in earlier surahs and the earlier journey of the month Allah said, keep the company of those whom do the dhikr. Keep the company of your guides and those whom are ashiqeen and they're Muhammadiyoon. And as a result that love that you develop within your heart and emanates through the pores of your light and your soul, its natural bond is your soul will connect back. You don't have to send it with your mind, all you have to do with your mind is open your mind to have a love and good manners, good character. And as a result your soul moves and levitates towards them. And as a result they are like ships, they grab everyone and their ship is going back into whom they love because their shaykhs are always holding them in their ship and that ship is in another shaykh's ship, that ship in another shaykh's ship until you're in the ship of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in which he is in Sana Kamil, in which everything is within that one ship. And La ilaha illallah is the power and qudra of that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So has the immensity, the light and love has an immense reality and we should never think of it physical. This is not physical, this is not a guy to run to you and, and sit there in Vancouver and be here and be there. This is about the love through your heart, through your actions and your deeds. And it's not about emailing and saying, I love you because that doesn't mean anything. Allah said, we seal your lips on the day that you rise into our presence. This is about a love that is through the action of insan, that they do their dhikr, they do their awrad, they do their support, they go out and try to feed, to do their charity, to study and they develop that love through their actions they're doing. That speaks louder than words, the actions speak louder than words because anybody can say, your children say, I love you but they don't love you as soon as you don't give them the allowance they actually then say bad words back to you. So <laughs> not love and, and by tongue is, is not uh, of importance. 
This love is by people's actions. So that's why we keep telling you, we see it, we see your comments, we see the people. We, we go through every single email to see what's, what possibly people are doing, what they're commenting, who's posting, who's sharing, that's love. Not the people come saying, no, I love you, I love you, I love you, this not, that's not, this is what this is about. This has to do with people who want to show their love through their actions, their studying, their learning, going out and feeding. This is the greatest example, Prophet must be so happy, look, look your students are giving food. They, they understood, they're going and trying to help, they give the drink, they give water, they do all of these charitable acts, they post these articles. That's what makes everything to be so beatific in which the shaykh feels very honoured in the presence of Prophet and then they look, look the students are actually, they're putting their faith in action. Their faith is actually manifesting and now is affecting people and blessing people and alhamdulillah. So this is, this is the immensity of that way. But all of this is then always to think in the world of light. That as soon as I do these good deeds and good actions, my soul is bonding with them and with him, with him, with him all the way into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad for his only a, a representation of that reality. Just a small minor flower in a garden of Sayyidina Muhammad in which to with a fragrance of love and good character to attract people. So that they come and say, what a beautiful garden this is and they begin to smell the fragrance of that rumi, that rose garden. Means that Gulam Muhammadi, the rose is called Gulam Muhammadi and it's the king of all flowers. So this Muhammadan garden, Gulam Muhammadi garden is what is trying to attract people to come to this garden. All the gardens you think you want to see on this earth. Come to the Muhammadan garden in which its fragrance is guaranteed to intoxicate you and make you to be lost in the ishq and the love of Allah's Divinely Presence, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of severe anxiety and increased risk of panic attacks at night? They often come with cold chills. Does this have anything to do with jinn attack? Yeah, I think we had one of these things last week too. So the anxieties and these things, yeah, these are energies. And keep your ta'weez, keep your meditation, keep your practices. Anytime people are sensitive to energy, then they're going to feel the fear and panic and all these different types of uh, feelings because you're talking about the energy world. So if the person is, is strong in their practices, they should feel less and less disturbance in their field of energy. If they're not strong in it, new to it or don't have any experience in it, then yeah any energy comes by, you can feel fear, you can feel panic, you can feel anxiety. So these are different, different uh, issues and this is again all based on you don't have any mental issues. Because if you have mental issues that then is something that has to be resolved through medicine. Because if there's something wrong in your receptors and the wiring is not correct, then with medication that has to be treated. So people can say, oh check I'm, uh, I'm not feeling well, I'm, I'm a little bit sick, is this because of jinn? No, yeah maybe because of jinn but at the same time you need your medicines. So it's not going to resolve it. Then once you take the medicine you find, okay everything is medically correct and you still feel that way, then energy practices, spiritual practices and all of these things. But that's why we don't want to talk too much about this because a lot of people with medical issues now. So then spirituality attracts these people. You have to be careful about too many questions like that because then you'll get all of the people who are mentally not well. Start saying, oh yeah it's jinn, I'm seeing jinn, it's like just, no that's schizophrenia, that's bipolar, those are, those are medical conditions. So true spiritual energy, you, you've got to do your practices, you've got to make your connections. That's why there's so many books we have on the energy, how to connect to the energy fields. And then you have to get the meditation book, it's two years of all of these questions and you read the book. And as a result of reading the book you ask more advanced questions on the energies. 
so that I'm reading, I'm feeling the energy, I feel the heat or for example those types of issues that mean that you're practicing. Otherwise if you're just coming new into this and it's all about, oh I have paranoia, I have schizophrenia, I'm hearing things, I'm seeing things, yeah, 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 that we don't deal in that field. And we quickly refer you to a hospital. Have you ever called the doctor's office now anywhere on the phone? As soon as you call on and say, if this is a medical emergency, hang up the phone and dial 911 right now because we're not an emergency service. So if your email contains you have medical issues and all sorts of you know medical conditions and psychological conditions, hang up your email and call 911 right now because it's not… we're not uh, getting involved in that. This is about medically sort of well people spiritually trying to learn and, and physically taking care of themselves. As a result they begin to spiritually begin to practice their energy practices and, and these are important. Otherwise we'll attract a whole bunch of you know people that are in difficult and they're not… it's not spiritual, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Please forgive us for our ignorance, uh, could you kindly clarify the spiritual reality of organ donation? Organ donation, yeah. But the understanding for the donation and the reality of is that the body is not ours and that we are uh, uh, merely a, a rental agreement. That Allah is the owner and the custodian of what He has given to us, merely loan to us and to return it back to Allah Inshaallah in a as good and better condition which can't be done but assuming all the difficulties of wear and tear on this earth we try our best to to do our spiritual practices, to, to compensate for, for the wrong that we've done upon ourselves. So it's the concept of trying to build and to, to do goodness to what Allah has given to us. So to, to take a renter car and paint it your own color, change the seats, take out everything, put new things in, then Allah is going to hold us to account that, why did you modify what I gave to you? And, and hence then the rules on tattooing and, and uh, marking and changing of the, the body, the, 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 the things that people want to do upon their body. Then you come into the organs which are not yours to give away. So then those have to be viewed in the same, same light that this is, this is a, a trust that Allah has given to me and I don't know the consequences of, of taking uh, and giving my organs away. And what will I feel in the grave and what will be the difficulty of that issue? And who was it given to and was that person somebody who was going to do goodness with it? Or all your life you struggled and they give your heart to, to more motorcycle gang member because he's next in line at the hospital. So these are things that has no wisdom in, in why people would want to do that. If they're going to do that for their loved one where they want to give their kidney to a child, to a loved one then alhamdulillah that's like a sadaqah, that's something that you're giving out of your heart and support to keep a loved one alive and in good health. But for the sake of just giving something away that's not yours and it doesn't serve a religious spiritual purpose like helping family because the first people you're supposed to help are your own family when you give sadaqah and charity. So your body can be a charity if it's going to improve the life of someone whom you love a lung, a, a kidney, a, a liver transplant, all these things that they're giving to their family and children and family members. But just for the sake of giving something that's not yours it's uh, spiritually not advisable. And you have to specify that on your will and on your things because they want to take apart the entire body when the person's uh, barely dead. So we have to specify those types of things. And even now they said that they take out the, the women's placentas and they do many, many bizarre procedures on people and they don't know where these are going and which labs are taking these body parts and, and these, these procedures. So 
everything has to be clarified and, and, and sort of noted to people, don't take this out, don't throw this away and if you're going to throw it let us to see where you disposed it and, and these types of things if they can inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How to use salawats to improve our connection to Imam Zaman? The salawat is that every, every Muhammadiyoon has a salawat and we do that salawat to draw near inshaAllah to their Muhammadan identity. So Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad sahib al-waqt, sahib zaman sahib al-waqt, sahib al-unsur. So Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi sahib al-waqt, sahib al-unsur, unsur. And you can do that hundred times a day making this salawat upon the Muhammadan reality of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, inshaAllah. <clears throat> and that brings the love and the nearness of Sahib al-Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam and uh, connecting the hearts with the shaykhs and asking for Rudd sharif and then connecting the heart with Sayyidina Mahdi salam. And doing that and sitting, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi, Ya Sahib al Waqt, Sahib al Surya, Ya Sahib al Waqt, Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi, Sahib al Waqt. And connecting your heart and asking for his nazar and his light and his dress upon our souls, inshaAllah, and to, to reach towards their power. Asking from the seven wazir Shamat al Fardani, Abdul Rauf al Yamani, Yusuf al Siddiq, Imam al Arafeen, Nisan al Mutaqalimeen, Arif Tayyar Maruf ibn Murhan, Burhan Karam, Qawth al Anam, Sahib al Waqt, Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi, Salaam. That calling upon this Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam and his seven wazirs and asking that their nazar be upon you, their dress be upon you. And I think we have it in the, the madad and the, the recitations of the madad and calling upon, these are for power, for, for energy, for protection when we're not feeling something is right and the energy is not right. These are all uh, immense blessings and, and immense nazar upon us that they watch over us, our families and our communities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Shaykh. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi Shaykh, you mentioned last week that conscious lies in the heart. How could that consciousness be awakened speedily? Did we mention that the consciousness, the, the lower conscience and higher conscience, right? So that you, you have a, a light of your soul, they, they call it consciousness. So there's a light, a minor and a major light, the minor light of the soul that resides within the heart. And our life is to connect with the, the greater soul that is always in Divinely Presence. Means that Allah didn't give us something to extinguish and lose. So our life is about light the heart, that you're a, a flame, a candle in the wind is the analogy. Our life is like a candle in the wind that we have this little flame and unless you make it into a torch what's going to happen? It's going to blow out. So shaitan knows that, so shaitan's whole life is <laughs> to blow out the flame so that you don't have light, you're not luminous, nothing is illuminating from you and that's why they're illuminati <laughs> Ill, like no they're not luminous, they're non-luminatis. Right? Because they blew the flame out and as a result shaitan comes and plays with them and gives them a different type of light and they think, oh they're, they're illuminating. No they're not, they're like a black light that it's devoid of light and it just reflects reflections. So that's the whole trick that shaitan is putting upon this earth is saying, come my way for illumination that I, I give it to you much easier. And tariqahs come and say, no this is a spiritual path in which to, to do your zikr, make your salawats, make your meditation, that's the fastest, strongest way. We wouldn't teach the, the slowest way, we're teaching the fastest way. So you get the book on energy, read it and master it. Get the book on meditation, read it, master it. 
get the book on the levels of the heart because you're going to open up the heart, you read it, master it. So these are all the books we gave, it's all in this curriculum. We didn't write random books based on you know moon travel and how to get to the moon and what's the reality of the moon, we read, read a book on, wrote a book on what, what was the guidance? On the sun and the moon and the rising sun of the west, why? Because the sun would rise from the west. And that had to do with isharat and guidance and the reality of the sun and following the light of Prophet So anything we've taught and the only reason they're allowing to be taught, to, be, to teach this subject is because it is the fastest and most powerful way. There is nothing faster and it's not slow because there's no more time on this earth. It's tedious, yes because Allah has to approve of all security measures. That every step has to be a person whom is secure, their character is correct, their intention is correct inshaAllah and then Allah opens and Allah opens. So our life is about this, this flame that seems to be blowing in the wind. Every choice you make in life, very simple, my, life, my heart is a candle in the wind. Every choice you make, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is this going to make my candle burn brighter? or darker and blow out. Say, okay I should go to this concert, you're gonna blow that candle out. Now go with these people who they're gonna drink and smoke, your candle's going out. I'll uh, do this tattoo on my body, your candle will go out. So all the things that young people are thinking about is very simple, are you going to build your candlelight or you're planning on turning it off? If you turn it off then you can't, you can't imagine being stuck in immense darkness because whatever little light God has given to you, if you extinguish that and that's all that shaitan wants, then you're, you're in an abyss of, of darkness and darkness upon darkness is immensely frightening, immensely frightening. A person of no faith ends up in an abyss of blackness. Darkness beyond imagination, no horror, no good, no nothing, just nothingness of, of darkness which is much immensely more horrific than punishment because the mind is just lost in darkness. So the, the immense blessing is light. We say, imagine there's 10,000 layers of darkness and you just light one candle, one match. That's the power of light, it can illuminate the darkest levels of darkness just one match. So it means then our life is make sure that you safeguard your heart, safeguard that light. What can I do to build my light? My salawats, my zikr, my practices, everything the shaykh is teaching builds my light. Everything the television teaching will take out my light, which one are you going to do? So then most people will do all their practices and then a little bit of dunya, so at least their light is not extinguishing. And that's why they keep a balanced life and those whom can push more towards the good, they do even more practices until their light is no longer a candle. And that's a state in which we call you are lit. Your meditation came, the energy came, your practices came and you feel that the light hit into your heart from the shaykhs. And now you're lit, every time you sit to meditate you heat up like a torch. Your neck is on fire, your hands are on fire and you're, you're lit. There's no wind is going to take that out because it's now becoming a sun. So the shaykhs then become luminous like a sun, there's no more candle. Their heart is lit and begins to burn everything. Anything that comes into their proximity will feed the heat of their existence. And the bad usually try to avoid them and keep away from them. Even comes into the association and hides from them and talks to everybody else except the, the shaykh. So that, that is also dangerous, you have to keep yourself in the presence of that light and let it to, to burn the difficulties and bad character. That's why then you also meditate. When you meditate that luminous light that you're connecting is coming and burning away every type of badness and bad character. So then this be reality is to take it from a candle into something permanent. 
As a result they become da'im, their eternal realities are, are lit and they're from the oceans of al-hayat. Allah granted them an eternal light and they operate on this earth by that reality inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah If children fall asleep as soon as molid starts, are they still blessed with the light of zikr? Yeah definitely, it's, it's a heavy energy for them. So they pick up the light and they inshaAllah they enter into like a fana as soon as the zikrs begin. Their souls are, are moving in that ocean. So many times they wake up as soon as the zikr's over and they're very sort of powered and hard to put them to sleep because they have a lot of energy. So some sweets and dates or something that sort of can sort of balance that energy. But uh, most definitely that they're, they're pious, they're clean, they're good and they're sort of overwhelmed by the amount of that energy so that they can absorb it in their state of sleep. But for adults that's not good manners, it's the reverse. For adults as soon as you sleep you contaminate the zikr because that, that's a bad character. So that's why it's advised then to have coffee and tea before you enter the majlis of zikr so that you're awake and you're alert because shaitan make the person to become heedless and then put them out. So that's, that's the danger, it's a continuous battle. And if the energy is still strong and you did all of that and energy is strong then the energy knocked you out, there's nothing you can do. But just to come in a state of you know just tired and know you're tired and then sit there and coming for like a nap time, then it's against the adab and tariq al-adab for the, for the zikr because you're not holding it to the esteem that it should have. So when we would go to see the shaykhs it's a heavy energy. So always lots of coffee, teas, whatever we could so that not to, to lose that time in their presence by sitting there and snoring while he's giving a talk and uh, then that would be against the adab. You wouldn't do that in the presence of Prophet you'd fight yourself to sit on your knees, put yourself in pain and through pain you'd stay awake. So they keep and train themselves in these states. There were times even when we would drive the energy was so intense being next to Mamana that you feel like you're going to fall asleep on the road. I had to have a spray of water that would keep spraying my face just to keep myself alert and awake. And that's from being awake but the energy was just overwhelming. So but you still you have to struggle for all of these things. But children don't do these things so they're innocent, they're mazloom and they absorb the energies. But adults then they have to struggle to keep the adab of the tariqah so that they're coming to learn, coming to absorb, coming to, to, to keep their meditation and their practices. You same for people at home that you keep it right before the zikr, have your teas, have your, your things to keep yourself awake if possible and you sit with that, that type of adab to absorb the energy and to make them the most of it and if not then inshaAllah next time will be better. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila shirf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyatul aliyya wa sayyidu sadatina wa siddiqina al fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.